You are listening to The Ramblers, the official podcast of Rambling Ever On. Episode one, a trip to the 80s. <laughs> you're, not, you're not for real, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you found it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm embarrassed that it took us to number six to actually pick this movie. Um, I had a smile on my face from the minute the movie started until it ended. Youth groups everywhere agree with you, Nathan. She's totally serious. Oh, okay. So much for this podcast being successful. Everybody, this is going to be uh, the inaugural post of a resurrected podcast. Um, I would say a pilot episode, but we have had several episodes in a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But new crew, um, in fact, only two of three of us were, were there for the original post, for the original podcast, but now we've got new people. Um, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. And then um, we're gonna we're gonna get, I'll let Phil start doing some talking about what we're gonna do um, this this episode. So why don't we start with who's I don't know who's in order on I can see who's in order on my screen, but I don't know if it's who, who's in order on your screen. So Nathan's up first. Is he up next to my picture in your screen? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out then, Nathan. Nathan, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nathan. Okay. I knew, I knew as soon as that left my mouth, I knew that yeah. was, that's what was coming. Was where, are you, where are you calling, where are you joining us from, Nathan? From the uh, great metropolis of Park Hills, Missouri. Park Hills, Missouri. Welcome. Welcome. Brandon. You got nothing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no name, no location. Well, okay. You, you already said my name, so they got that. I don't uh, know your last name. I'm joining you from the city that has the world's largest high school basketball gym, Newcastle, Indiana. Newcastle, Indiana. Right. Two words, new blank castle, right? Unlike the British Newcastle upon time. Yeah, which is yeah, new, it's two, yeah, two words. Newcastle in England is Newcastle, one word. Just trivia right. for everybody there. Yeah. Um, Philip. I'm Phil. I'm in Nashville, or I mean, you could say I'm in Mount Juliet. But I'm I was going to say you're not. You're in Mount Juliet, yeah, not Nashville. Wilson County. I'm not in Davidson County. I'm in Wilson County, Tennessee, right outside of Davidson. Awesome. And awesome. Um, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So Phil's going to be telling us what we're going to be doing uh, in a little bit. Um, next up, Daniel. Hi, I'm Daniel. And uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, so I'm in Japan. I am in Iduma, and it's uh, it's a little city that Josh is very familiar with uh, over here, about uh, 40 minutes outside of downtown Tokyo. So, yep, happy awesome. to be here. I know exactly where you're sitting. I've sat <laughs> in that that spot. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and the most relaxed of our contestants tonight um mike yep um i'm mike i am uh <laughs> calling in from ashland city tennessee we are uh one of the free counties uh just outside of nashville um and yeah it's good to be here awesome awesome you look very relaxed i love it. i am i love how I you're am. putting our listeners and viewers just at peace just calm uh, down Somebody's got to. So. <laughs> All right. And uh, Gowdy, <clears throat> Gowdy, Gowdy, shoot cannon, watcher of the night. My, my name is Gowdy Cannon. I'm, I'm calling from uh, Cesar, Illinois. I'm not free. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I love you so much. Um. Okay, so like I said, we have this all-star panel um, set up, and uh, we're going to be doing some fun things tonight, something that all of our age group is familiar with, and people who are watching that are close, a little close to our age will, will enjoy, I think. 
we're going to be taking a, a stroll through time back to when movies were good. Um, back when emotional connections to movies are all about nostalgia and uh, really weird puppetry. Um, and there may be a David Bowie appearance. So um, there will be. Maybe. <laughs> David Bowie may show up as the Goblin King. Just saying. Philip, why don't Phil, sorry, I keep joking and calling you. <coughs> Phil, why don't you why don't you let us know what's going on tonight? All right. So we figured the easiest topic that we could talk about was something that was pretty familiar to all of us. We all grew up in the 80s. So we're gonna do our top movies from the 80s. We're going to do a draft. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to go because we have a couple of wild cards in our group here. Um, since David Bowie's already been brought up, I'm a little bit worried. Um, about where this is going to go, but um, yeah, we're just going to. This is the first. This is technically. I know Josh mentioned that we had done a couple other podcasts in the past. This is technically the first Rambling Ever On podcast. Um, at least it's the first attempt at one. It could be a complete disaster, or it could be a uh, moderate success. I don't know. So we're going to, yeah, we're just going to get started. The draft starts. I think we're going to go with Nathan first. He gets the first pick. So now can he's going to pick some, it. Give us, some cl give us some clarity on parameters, just so that we're not just like naming <laughs> stuff. What parameters do, do we have to follow in this draft? Give us the rules so that we know what to break. Because yeah, I am going the, to make the draft faster order. with rules, every ounce of are, effort I have. Rules aren't going to matter to this group. Like I can, every rule that I list, somebody's <laughs> going to violate. Basically, if it's a movie, if it's a movie from the 80s, that's, you know, if, if, I don't even care. Like if nobody's ever even heard of this movie, if you think it's one of the best movies from the 80s, you can have it on your list. If your movie gets taken by somebody in front of you, obviously it's off the list, it's on the master list, and you pick the next one that's in line on your list, if you have your list ranked. Okay. I'm already guessing that some people haven't even ranked their list. They probably just have a big movie that they're just going to choose from. So, created, yes, published, right. released in the 80s. Yes. Okay. A couple, can I throw in a couple things? Um, sure. One, <laughs> if you can give us the order of the draft, uh, and it will be a snake draft, meaning if you pick last in the first round, then you start the second round. Second, you know, you pick first in the second round. Also, if you if the movie came out in the '60s or '70s, but you watched it for the first time in the '80s, it doesn't count. That's right. Just want just want to clarify no. that. No, it doesn't matter when you watched it; it matters when it came out. Yeah, it's it's got to be a movie would, from the '80s. You would think I wouldn't have to say that, but I think with this group, I do. Uh, amen. <laughs> I'm a stickler for rules, and that is exactly right. <laughs> Staying on topic. Okay, so who's going to so – Nathan? We start what? with Nathan. You want me to just list the, the draft order or then – I'd love to know where I fit because I've got to pick yep. my movies. I'm looking them up right now. Yep. Nathan <laughs> first, then Brandon. Research. Then Josh. <laughs> then Daniel. Gowdy. Me. And then Mike is last, and then he'll pick twice. And then, you set that up, didn't you? You played. I don't know because you guys are going to take. Yeah, I'm not happy about that, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> Nathan, kick us off. Inaugural post draft, first time. You're the first. Go for it. All right. I'll I'll, I'll be nice, and I'll start with something safe and abiding by the rules. Um, I'm going with uh, 1987, The Princess Bride. Ooh, big pick. <laughs> you mean, you mean <laughs> something simple. Did you just qualify that, but you're going to go easy on us? You pick what may be the greatest movie ever made? Oh, wow. Oh. Safe, safe pick is what I said. Safe pick. Okay. So, give us a reason why. Fun why did it make your list? It's fun, adventurous, it's funny. Uh, it is immensely quotable. <clears throat> I would probably say that it's inconceivable that there is a more quotable movie out there. It's good. It's good. You get yeah. extra points for Phil's look of disgust just then. <laughs> you that point. Can I say something about The Princess Bride? I introduced my kids to The Princess Bride about three weeks ago. Mm. I was watching it with them. I, no joke. I had a smile on my face from the minute the movie started until it ended. It, it literally was 
pure entertainment to watch it. And it's like, not many movies can do that, you know, but uh, it would definitely be a desert island movie for me. So, awesome. Youth groups, youth groups everywhere agree with you, Nathan. It was it was one of I the mean, rare approved movies that the girls were allowed to watch in the girls' dorm back right. when we were in college, back at Welch. They were yeah, allowed to watch that movie. I didn't I didn't see it growing up as a kid, but and, and I the first few times I saw it I thought it was funny. <clears throat> but on choir tour, that was like the only movie that they had in the bus. <laughs> so we watched it probably 15 times on choir tour and, and I was vowed to never watch that movie again. Okay. Well, Hey, Nathan, you didn't steal it from Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gathering. It's not on my list. Awesome. Well, speaking of your list, Brandon, um, yeah. what you got, what's your first pick? This is like nearly impossible to, to narrow down my childhood to like one pick at the top here. So I, it's it's hard to choose. There's like five or six that it's hard to really narrow it down. So I'm going to go with Raiders of the Lost Ark as my first pick. Great um, choice. Yeah. Um, I mean, 1981, you know, obviously I was only a year old, so I didn't watch it when it first came out, but I don't, I don't know the first time I saw that movie, but it's, it's a movie that still holds up. I think I saw it a few months ago and it was just as good as ever. And I think for a movie that's, you know, almost 40 years old, that's pretty amazing. I completely agree. I mean, it's got, it's got, um, who directed that movie? I don't even know. Spielberg? Spielberg. Spielberg. I mean, you got an 80s movie directed by Spielberg. You got Harrison Ford. You got, I mean, just like a classic adventure story. I think that movie's got it all and it's held up over time. So that's, that's why, that's probably got to be my number one pick there. That's awesome. Anybody have any comments on Raiders of the Lost Ark? Did he steal that from anyone? Did anyone is anyone cursing out of their? Oh yeah, I'm not cursing. I'm glad somebody picked it. Nice. Yeah, it, it's way up. It on was my top list. three for me. So yeah, it All definitely right. belongs. Awesome. Mike, did you, was it you? Was did I go with you to watch it in the theater? Yeah, like a couple, just yeah. two or three years ago, or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was awesome. It was like watching it for the first time, and it felt just perfectly. Yeah. It didn't feel out of date, really. Yeah, and that's what it may have been. It may have been ten years ago, but I've lost track of time since COVID started. So I don't know. But we watched it. So as an adult, I watched it. You're like Gandalf after he died in the movie. Light years. Yeah. In the day. That's All a right. good time marker for this podcast. That's we good. passed Somebody through shadow and flame. Passed through shadow and flame. Um, I think Phil, you said something that was true that it held up. I think that. It's a lot to say that a giant rolling stone, there was no, I mean, what, what kind of CGI, what kind of effects did they have? And yet it was entertaining. It was really good. Uh, I always remember the snake scene when the snake snaps and it's clearly behind plexiglass. Like you can see the plexiglass, Yeah. but your child mind was like, Oh, it's going to get him. <laughs> so there are, there are a few little things that, Obviously, the technology wasn't the same then, but the, as a as a whole, the movie is still really good. Yeah, it's not it's not just nostalgia. I've got movies on this list that are just pure. Yeah, nostalgia. I agree. If, if I go back and watch them again, I'm like, oh, that's terrible. But you know, I still love it because right. yeah, you know, those are all my movies. The, right. the face heads up. The faces melting at the end still looks cool. Yes, yes. It's important to get a good face melt. You know, it yeah. almost has a little bit of uh, Large Marge off of Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee's Great Adventure. Speaking of, hey, it's my pick. Spoiler, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, my first pick is going to be the uh, epic, the epic tale of um, a bike that was stolen. And they had to track it down, and it led to some amazing places like the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pee-wee's great adventure. <laughs> you're, not, you're not for real, are you? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you question my choices? That movie. <laughs> it is everything about childhood. I watched that movie a thousand times over and over. The crime, the guy who committed the crime. You know that ticket. You know. You know that sticker on the mattress. Rip that off. 
<laughs> I just think that it encapsulated a lot of. Still going to end? Is this still going? What? No, it's not, this is not a joke. He's totally serious. Oh, That's okay. Pick. So yeah. much for this podcast being successful. Kiwi's <laughs> Great Adventure is our number three movie of the eighties. That, <laughs> that, that really happened, and we're going to have to live with that. Yeah, I'm. It's my. I pick. think we That's have. I think pick. we have different goals for this podcast. That's a Ryan Leaf level pick. Hey right guys, now. if I start out talking about David <laughs> yeah. Bowie's going to make an appearance, you know, these are going to be quality picks. <clears throat> so oh, man. In all seriousness, yes, it was zany. Yes, it was crazy. Yes, it was Pee Wee Herman. But rewind before all the other stuff. Rewind to who Pee Wee was in our childhood. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> large large in the semi truck. I was terrified for weeks. That, that was like, freaky. Yes, yeah, that was terrifying. Yeah. So uh, that's my choice. You telling me that none of I didn't take that from anybody? No. Mm -mm. No. 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 It, no. It just, it just <laughs> missed the cut for me. Okay. Good, Mike. Thanks. <laughs> I could have had a list of seventy-five, and then you wouldn't have taken it from me. Well, good. I like to play the safe game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> next. I think I'm up. Is that right? Yep. Okay. okay. For my first pick, um, you know, I, I've gone back and forth. Josh has me a little bit kind of thrown off here because I wasn't quite sure if we were going for like cream of the crop or if we were trying to go for Why did mine you know throw personal. You off on that? I'm well, no, no, Sorry. no. I, I just. I didn't know. I didn't know like whether we could put something that was so personal so high in the list. Like if we were trying what? to go for, like, <laughs> well, hey, they can take away your freedom to go outside. They cannot take away your freedom to choose. What okay. You like, oh, uh, good, good. Then I feel good about my first choice. Then I'm going with the 1989 Weird Al classic, underrated Jim UHF yes! as my as my number oh, one pick. Man. <laughs> This is gonna be great. <laughs> Worst I love, it. UHF. I love it ever. <laughs> oh man, there's just so I could go on and on about this. I, I saw it so many times when I was a kid. Um, the little parody bits, Conan the Librarian, um, <laughs> Badgers. We don't need no stinking badgers. Um, with the animal <laughs> clinic. I mean, it just it goes on and on and on. And then you have um, um you have i don't know just a, a great cast that they picked for the movie it's hilarious from beginning to end um i, I think it easily earns my top spot so gowdy i'm just gonna call on gowdy for a minute gowdy who what what was one member who was one member of this great cast i don't know what the word he's talking about i mean i, I haven't seen <laughs> i call it on you because daniel as you know michael richards yes in the I didn't cast know that. Of uhf that was one of his first uh First deals there. I could name yeah, like you're missing 10, out. The yeah, 10 Michael Richards movies, uh, you know, or works outside of Seinfeld. I did not know that. Okay. Well, you need to rectify that quickly. Anybody else have yes. anything wonderful to say about UHF or otherwise? I loved UHF as a young teenager. <laughs> That's what you were in the 80s. Well, no, it wasn't. Even I, I, tried to, I tried to watch it recently. Literally, I tried to watch it like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey let me ask didn't hold up didn't better, hold up Raiders of the Lost Ark or UHF that's a tough one I did, I did like Michael Richards character though he was still very funny in it okay good good and the cone in the librarian bit always works it does always and, 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 and always. the wheel the wheel of fish I mean you didn't you're not a wheel of fish fan <laughs> Daniel you make me proud you make me proud okay <laughs> next up next up Yowdy. I'm gonna bring some class back. <laughs> Thank you. No uh, I'm gonna go with Back to the Future. Yeah, because it was one of those movies, like a lot of the movies in the '80s, you could watch over and over and over again, and the ending never got old. I still got chill bumps every time. It had a perfect villain and Biff, perfectly quotable. Had the wild, crazy hair, or wild eyed, crazy haired scientist. And uh, in hindsight, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, the relationship between Doc and Marty seems kind of weird, but at the time, you know, it seemed to seem perfectly. <laughs> me. I mean, 
So it's Michael J. Fox. was weird even now until you just said that. So thanks for ruining my childhood. Uh-oh. Michael J. Fox owned the 80s in a lot of ways, and uh, that movie oh was just God. perfect, perfect cinema, perfect theater. Oh excellent adventure. Yeah. Who are we getting the feedback from? Who are we hearing yeah. talk from? I'm hearing a side conversation somewhere. So. <laughs> Mike, it's, it, Mike. it's probably me. Need it. Sorry. Okay, so... so yeah, I think it's a great choice. I watched, I've watched the the first two Back to the Futures with uh, with Aiden, who's seventeen, and he really liked the first one. The second one, he wasn't quite as in love with. And mm-hmm. I watching him now. When I was a kid, I liked the second one better. Mm-hmm. I thought like all the future stuff was cool. Now it just seems really like it's kind of hokey and kind of it's a little bit more. They go for like the cheese factor more in the second one, but the first one I think still holds up really well. Like as far as like the comedy stuff and all of that it's it's a good movie it's a good pick so i uh it came on tv just the other day and it's one of those movies that when it's on tv and obviously it just came out on netflix it just showed up on netflix um but when it's on tv it's one of those that you've got to stop you've got to stop and watch it because it's entertaining um i was like you i loved the second one more when i was a teenager maybe because i like the concept of crossing the paths and you can't you know future time travel and all that but it's impossible. First, the first thing that comes to my mind with that movie, and that was in my top three as well, is it is iconic is the word that comes to my mind. And when you think about the DeLorean and you think about, you know, I mean, yeah. at, at work all the time, if somebody says something that even sounds a little bit scientific, we go, yeah, 80, 88 gigawatts or whatever, you know, right. whatever they say. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's like, it's so classic and iconic that there's so many uh, images uh-huh and lines from that movie that are just part of movie like yeah i mean it's i I would say it's it's one of the best movies you know not just of the 80s but 80s 90s 2000s you know all that when you say iconic it's right up there with Wee herman's tequila dance i I just i feel like don't drag it down don't drag it back down that's exactly what this this podcast is capturing is that essence of iconic (laughs) I've always found it interesting in the Back to the Future that Biff's kind of like his his go-to line, like his what he's known for is that he hates manure. <laughs> who, who doesn't? I hate, I hate manure. Like, like it falls on top of you, and what you're going to be like, this is cool. Like, yeah. who's right. not going to hate that? Like, it's almost like Indiana Jones is not snakes. Why snakes? You know, why manure? Um, all right. Michael, are you up? No, I am. Oh, oh sorry. Skipped over the important Lytle. My bad. <clears throat> and I'm I'm embarrassed that it took us to number six to actually pick this movie. Um, cause, Dirty Dancing. Uh, <laughs> Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Oh! You know? mm-hmm. I mean, what, yep. what is wrong? What is wrong with us as a collective <laughs> that it took this long to get to the best movie of the 80s? We saved it for you, <laughs> Phil. Okay. I just knew somebody else would pick it. I don't want to. I want to use mine. Exactly. Exactly. So Phil, tell us about Empire Strikes Back. It's the best Star Wars movie, hands down. Uh-huh. It's the most complex. It's the it's got the best story, the best character development. You know everything to do with uh, Luke, and you introduce Yoda, and you get to meet him for the first time, and he's probably the best character in the whole series. Um, awesome introduction to that character he's hilarious and he's you know he kind of throws luke off because he's pretending to be something that he's not and the final sequence in on cloud city with luke and vader and their fight it's so much better than any of the lightsaber stuff in the first film the revelation of who darth vader is i mean it's you can't get you can't get more iconic than empire so it's so phil do you remember our i mean we're pushing let's see that was 20 14? Six years ago. Six yeah, years six years ago. ago. We did our podcast on our favorite movies um, of all time. And I don't know if you remember yeah. what it was, but it was Empire Strikes Back as my number one favorite movie of all time. Um, and I completely agree. I love even the, I said it in that podcast, but even the title, the foreboding that it gives you to just read the title. It's like, what does that mean? Are the good guys going to win? Like, I don't know. And I'm a sucker for sequels. You know, Godfather 2 was on there for me, too. But 
I think both of those movies excelled at that. So yeah, completely but agree. The revealing the revealing that Vader is Luke's father is I mean that might be the most famous scene and and yeah. like storyline in any movie ever. I mean that's that's huge. So we just watched that. I let Ruby watch that. My 10 year old, she's 11 now. We watched it when she was 10. And I was proud as a father to get her to 10 years old without having that, that revealed. So that was really cool. Story, Toy Story almost ruined it for us, right? With uh, Bob, yeah. Ryan, but awesome. Good pick. Good pick, Phil. Mike? Yeah. Um, before I say that, Empire is, yeah, it's the best movie of the 80s. So, um, it would have been my top pick, but now I get to pick the second best movie of the eighties as my top pick. And that is E.T. Good choice. The extra Good puppetry. I mentioned puppetry. Yep. Um, that's another one like Raiders, um, mm -hmm. like Empire, but another one that I saw as a kid, of course, a bunch, but then watched it later on as an adult in the theater when they re-released it. I, I don't know if it's like the 30th anniversary or something or the 20th. I don't remember exactly what it was, but maybe the 30th anniversary. Um, it is still great. I mean, it was, I don't remember who all went with us that time, but um, yeah. It was, it was really good. One of, the, one of the best. Who has a memory attached to ET? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, Gowdy, everybody. did you just raise your hand on a Zoom meeting? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What yeah, I see that hand, Gowdy. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, I rode um I rode ET the ride at Universal Studios. It's probably my most tangible memory with ET. I was on the bike. So I remember that ride. I rode that ride as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gowdy, go ahead. I want to hear. I was just gonna say, you know, eight weeks ago I'd never even heard of this, you know, this uh this thing. So no, I remember like the McDonald's toy. Uh, eight weeks ago? Well, whatever. Whatever. The McDonald's toys, the, you know, the oh. phone home, you know, just, I mean, the iconic image of him over the moon. I mean, all that stuff was just, it was childhood. It was innocence. It was pure and, mm. and I loved it. I, yeah. I remember the, the anxiety I felt as a seven, eight year old at towards the end when they're like, get your bikes and meet us on the hill like that. It, you felt it, you know what I mean? It wasn't like an adult watching a movie. It was like, are they gonna are they gonna get there? Are they gonna save him? It was definitely palpable. So I didn't watch E.T. as a child. I I watched it for the first time as an adult. Okay. And honestly, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> there you go, Mike. Take that. Put that in your pocket. Contrarian. Contrarian. That, that's a really bad take, Nathan. Um <laughs> just to be honest but um it's timeless i mean that's the thing like watching it 30 <laughs> years later it's like it could have come out any any time yeah it's, i don't want to mention i don't want to mention so good. This movie. i don't want to mention this movie because it may be on my list but nathan were you more of a fan of the other et known as mac and me <laughs> yes yes he was possibly no no what are you not. shaking your head for brandon because that just, I think of the Paul Rudd thing now. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. That may be why it appears on my, uh, my list. I don't know. All right. My next pick, since I get to pick first Dude. in the second round, I'm going to change directions. Let me look at my list here. Um, that's tough. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with um, – <laughs> It's not the biggest movie on my list on my list that's left, but I'm gonna go with probably my next favorite that hasn't already been picked, and that is the Tom Hanks classic, The Burbs. The Burbs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you went for a Tom Hanks a Tom Hanks movie that wasn't big. Right. Okay. Or Turner and Hoops. Goes, goes wisely this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> Tell us what you love about the Burbs. Uh it's okay. it really is like probably my favorite comedy ever certainly in the top three or four um and just so it's so quotable um tom hanks is great in it um it's one of the movies that we probably quote the most just my brothers and other other people in our circle um so yeah 
I know it would have been on Phil's list for sure. I'm not sure about anyone else's. Although I probably would have been on several of your guys' list. Um, but yeah. That's but, funny um, that you should say that about you, the it's quotable among your family because I saw the movie before I met you guys, but and I liked it, but I didn't watch it as much and talk about it as much and quote it as much until I got to know you, the Lytles. So that's funny that, that you, you mentioned that because it's like when I think about the verbs, I think about the Lytle brothers. I, that's that's yeah. just in my mind. I have several things like that, Brandon, that when I think about those things, I think about the Lytle brothers. <laughs> and it, and at one point, here. <laughs> I'll say this, at one point in time, we thought, or not we thought, but we knew we loved it, but it was one of those things, like, does anybody else really even like this? Because um, it wasn't one of his popular, like you said, it wasn't big, you know, that was much bigger. Um, but I found out, and I've read stuff since then, that it actually has a pretty big cult following, and uh, a lot of people appreciate well, I, uh, no, I think verbs, it falls so. much more. It falls much more in the Joe versus the volcano category than it does the big, like as far as cult following and right. Yeah, that's good. Yep. All right, Phil. It was actually my my. It was going to be my choice. He took um, it from you. He did. took it from. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I'm, that's perfectly cool because then I get to pick a movie that probably won't get picked by anybody else except for maybe Mike. So. Um, so my next choice is, and I, everybody else wrote down like years and everybody knows the years stuff came out. I don't, I don't even care. Um, but my, mine's the Chevy Chase classic Fletch. Yes. <laughs> Great. What? Yeah, that was, well, was going to be my other big scene. That's that, all I see right Birds, Fletch is probably the most quotable movie to me. Yeah. I mean, I, Fletch is, it's funny. It's, it's the perfect vehicle for Chevy Chase, his smarmy sort of cocky attitude. And it, he's got so many good lines in that movie. It's got a good story. Um, he's trying to unravel the mystery of why this guy, this really wealthy guy wants him to kill him and, you know, give him all this money. He knows something's not right with it. Plus there's all the drug stuff on the, at the city in, in Los Angeles. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Now, yeah, it's very much an eighties movie with that soundtrack. Um, and the styles and Mike's walking around his house right now. Um, it is my other movie. Yeah, no, I think Fletch is hilarious. I, I can watch, anytime I watch it, I'm going to laugh. Um, I remember we had a big group of guys got together when Matt, Matt Markins lived off campus uh, one of his last years and he invited everybody over to his house. And there was like eight or nine guys piled into his little living room and we all watched that movie. Everybody was crying, laughing. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, and that's probably one of mine that I wouldn't consider it one of the greatest movies of the eighties, but as far as just movies that I enjoy, it's, yeah. it's as high on my list as just about anything. So. Yeah. I just always think of that movie. I think he, she comes to the front door and she said, I ran into a water Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Can like, I borrow your towel? My car is a water Buffalo. <laughs> water Buffalo. <laughs> I'll take a bloody Mary and a steak sandwich and a steak sandwich. So. All right, I'm I'm lost in the reverse S. I think we're with uh, Gowdy. Who? Gowdy. Gowdy. Oh. Good deal. Gordy. Yes. Gordy, let's hear it. <laughs> okay, I know we have just had two comedies, but this one definitely is uh, is one of those that has multiple genres that we talked about <clears throat> on camera. But and I'm going I'm I'm going with one of the ones I think are the best and will be the best received more than my own personal picks. I'll get to those later at the end, but. I'm going with Ghostbusters for this round because it, it was one of those that, I mean, just was a, <coughs> it was so well received. Bill Murray is funny without even trying. He, he can make you laugh with that with just a facial expression or a tone of voice. And the other cast was, was very well done. It was a unique idea. I mean, for me, I had seen movies like Poltergeist or whatever, but they, it had never been done quite like that. And, uh, and, and, uh, and so I, I could watch that movie every year and then not be bored by it. So. So we started a Bill Murray marathon in our home just recently. And um, in fact, we're taking nominations if anyone wants to offer some movies that are on the must see of that list. I've got about 10, I guess, 11, but Ghostbusters was the first one I chose to watch. And there are one liners by Bill Murray in there that are quintessential. It defined his characters that he played in so many other, like what about Bob and just good stuff. That's such a good choice, Gowdy. I mean, you got to have Bill Murray in there somewhere. He, yep. He's amazing. 
and a lot of those lines that are he's most famous for or that movie's most famous for were ad libbed. He yeah. wow. He would just come up with them on the spot and the rest of the cast would try to play along or they would crack up and they, but he would just go off script and say something that he, you know, whatever came to his head. And we were laughing about how ugly he is. Like in reality, he is not an attractive man. But there's something that you can't stop looking at. Like you want to watch him. He's very he's very and Alicia and I finally decided it's just personality. It's pure personality that you're looking at. Much like he's me. just always he's always interesting. Right. Like even when he's yeah. not the primary focus of the scene, if he's in the background, he's all you almost watch him more than you watch the other people because he's always doing something. And he either looks completely bored, which would be funny for like you shouldn't look bored in your own movie, or he's just doing something that is nobody else would do he does something that's different from anybody yeah that's you're right because it's a, that's a big cast but we all call it a bill murray movie it's not really a bill murray movie but that's how we look at it he's up with dan Aykroyd, like he was a big name at the time <clears throat> so yeah but okay. murray is the man so sorry mike I good pick sorry. good pick moving on i think we're at brandon or daniel which one daniel daniel yep i'm up okay Short and to the point, 1986, Aliens. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Good choice. Um, I, I just recently watched through the entire Alien movie series, and it's just jarring to see the transition between the first movie, which is a lot slower mm -hmm. and darker, and, and, and it has its own merits. But, man, they, it's like they took every plot point and, and every possible – tension from the first movie and cranked it up to 11 for the second movie it's just a great action sci-fi film from the beginning all the way to the end i think and um, it easily deserves a place toward the beginning of our, of our list yeah. i completely agree yep i love the first alien i think it's i think it's a classic it's obviously it's a 70s movie but it's a it's a monster horror movie Whereas Aliens mm -hmm. becomes a big action sci-fi, you know, and they're both, you know, they're 1A, 1B. I don't know which one I actually prefer, but I think Aliens is just, it does something so different for a sequel, but it, everything that it does works perfectly. Plus you have Bill, you have Bill Paxton in it. Right. And <laughs> well, and the, the characters. He's awesome. You, you barely meet them, and yet yeah. you know all of their personalities. You know exactly what they're going to do, and it um but boy that franchise went off the rails i mean that <laughs> gosh, you get that prison one it's like what is happening here yes it did awesome uh brandon this this pick is going to be oh, I'm, it's josh it's your pick oh josh's pick okay is it? yeah josh. um so this movie um i'll just give some clues this is a uh, 1987 horror movie. Um, it contains the journey of some young guys that are uh, find themselves fighting a group of vampires in a small town. It's the Lost Boys. The Lost Boys. Has everybody seen the Lost Boys? Don't yeah. don't laugh. I've never seen I it. I get how you thought the Pee Wee Herman was funny. Or like a funny I have not. But the Lost. Right, wait a minute. Time out. You guys haven't seen The Lost Boys? I've seen it. No. I've seen I it. I've not seen it. Corey Haim, Corey, whatever. Oh, the two Corys, Corey Film and Corey Haim. Um, what's his name? Kiefer Sutherland. Mm -hmm. I'm in Okay, shock. I have to see this. I have to see. I've never even heard of this movie. Yeah, I feel like Daniel would like this movie. It would be kind of up your alley, Daniel. I felt really good about this choice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not one of my favorites, but I don't have a – it's it's a very well uh, all right so, so it's got a it's lot it's on of every list yeah it's got, got a lot of 80s, 80s movies music. it's got a lot of 80s music in it it was goth before goth was goth mm -hmm. like it was um and there's the, the the plot point that really is the tension is these two guys are young this young brother his older brother gets mixed up with this group and becomes a vampire and it makes it like all the vampires obviously aren't bad now because I got one that my brother's mm -hmm. one. And, but there's these two, Corey Ham and Corey Feldman steal the show as the Frog Brothers. They're, they're the uh, vampire hunters that are bumbling idiots pretty much. So, yeah. 
my choice, Lost Boys. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it.